Hey everyone, we are Acrovan Adventures and today we are going to walk you through a very detailed video on everything you need to know about painting your school bus. We're going to show you all the tools that we used, all the prep methods, how we primed it, and then how we got to our dream color. a lot of things to get all of our decals and reflective strips off of our bus including a plastic scraper, a metal paint scraper, or an exacto knife, heat torches, anything you can imagine. What we found worked best for us was an exacto knife, a razor blade. Be careful when you do it though because you might end up scratching the paint around it. We didn't really care because we knew we were going to be painting it again anyways so not a big deal but just be aware. For the reflective strips, something I did notice is that certain types of reflective strips came off very easily with a heat gun or a blowtorch. Um, it didn't work on all of them, but they happen to be different, so you could try that yourself. Maybe it'll work. So it is illegal to drive a school bus with the word school bus on the side if you're not using it as uh, like a school district. So we put duct tape over the word school bus while we were driving from Texas all the way to North Carolina. And today I'm going to start trying to take off the decals because we're going to get it ready so we can paint it here in a couple weeks hopefully. snack break because this is a lot of very tedious work. It's really fun. All right, so what we're doing today is we got to take all of that reflective strip off the entire bus. Um, it's only six o'clock, but it is winter, so it's dark out. Um, I moved the bus under the street light so you all can see what I'm doing. But the best thing that I've been able to figure out is really to just take uh, a straight X-Acto knife and you kind of like run it and like cut along the glue underneath the reflective strip. I definitely have sliced some of the paint off, but since we're about to paint it again anyways, uh, I figured it wasn't really a big deal. If anyone has any better suggestions than using an X-Acto knife to get all this stuff off, we would love to hear it in the comments below. So why are we taking this off in the first place? Well, a lot of it's chipping off anyways. So we're afraid that if we paint over it while it's chipping, then we're just gonna like chip off all of our new nice paint. We really wanna start with a nice clean slate, nothing flaking or chipping off before we paint it. So we're gonna try and get all this reflective tape off and then hopefully we should be one step closer to painting it. This one you gotta get like really hot. Wow. Okay, now that we got all our decals off, we have to remove a lot of the sticky residue that was left underneath it. We found that Goof Off Pro worked the best in conjunction with our razor blade. So make sure you use the Goof Off Pro. It's a lot better than the regular Goof Off. 
Sometimes it worked well to spray the Goof Off Pro and then wipe it off with a towel, but we found that a lot of the times we still had to use the razor blade. Once you remove all the decals, you wanna make sure that your whole surface is ready for primer. In order to do that, you just need to rough up the surface everywhere that the paint is still pretty good and remove any rusty or flaky spots from your bus body. If you have anywhere on your bus that is completely rusted through or starting to, meaning you can just kinda of poke it with something hard and it will go completely through, it's really important to cut that out of your bus so that you don't end up spreading the rust even further. Once you cut the hole out, you can patch it with either sheet metal like galvanized or aluminum from your local hardware store. That kind of metal will not rust in the future. Or you can patch it with Bondo, which is what a lot of car people do. We started sanding our entire bus body with a rough grit sandpaper like 80 and then moving up to a finer grit. That took us a lot of time and I'm not sure if it was completely necessary. So if you're doing this yourself and you have a nice solid base of paint underneath, I recommend you probably could just go right to 180 rough the surface, that way your primer sticks to it and you probably will be good to go. Anywhere that the paint is chipping, um, it's important to remove that to the end of the chipping spot until you get to some nice secure paint. We used a wire brush on some of that if it was chipping extensively, and if not, we just used an orbital sander until it became smooth and seemed pretty sturdy. So something I thought was interesting, these black rails, um, they're really shiny and we have to sand them down so that the paint will stick to them when we do that. But these black rails, when you sand them, they actually have yellow paint underneath them. So if you start seeing yellow, it's not the paint spreading, it's actually just under the black there's actually more yellow. Let me show you. All the batteries on my power sanders died, which means I'm down to hand sanding. Um, and I want to show you, these are like soft sandpaper sponges. Um, they're really good for getting into the cracks, any contours, anywhere that you can't get with like a big uh, surface area. So definitely recommend these, and we're gonna start getting in the little grooves here. All right, so as far as we know, this is our one and only rust spot on the bus. So what I think we gotta do is first we gotta scrape away all this bad paint, but then we gotta either drill a hole here so that like maybe our propane lines go through it, or we have to like put a new piece of metal here and figure out how to cover this rust. We realized we didn't get a lot of footage of what we were doing back here, so we wanted to give you a brief overview of what we did. On the back of our bus, we actually had a little bit of an area where the rust had completely gone through the first layer of metal on the exterior. We polished it up really nice and removed all the surface rust, but we still were left with a hole on the back. We realized that leaving the rusty metal on the back, even though it was painted, is probably not a good idea. So we decided to cut out the rusty spot of metal completely and patch it with a piece of aluminum diamond plating, which is what you see here. You could also use some other type of sheet metal or galvanized steel or galvanized metal. We decided to go with aluminum diamond plating because aluminum can't rust. This is fairly cheap and it's really easy to work with. Once we cut the rusty patch out of our bus, we just covered it with this aluminum plate 
and we sealed it with silicon sealant and held it in with self-tapping screws. If we were gonna do this again, I certainly recommend that you remove any rusty spots of metal before you paint your bus. We're not too worried about the cosmetics because we're gonna have a propane tank and a motorcycle in front of this, so no one's ever gonna see it. And at the end of the day, it's a 20 year old bus, so things aren't gonna be perfect. You'll also see these two black spots. That's because we used to have our license plate holder back here. There were two holes where the license plate screws used to go in and we didn't want them to allow water in either. So we patched it using this waterproof Gorilla Seal tape. It's been on here for a few months now and it's holding very strong. So certainly recommend this for small holes that you don't care about cosmetics for. We are also pretty sure that the rust spot started in the first place because the bus's license plate was here all the time. We think that traps some moisture underneath it and just caused it to kind of brew that rusty spot under the license plate. Going forward, our license plate will be on the back bumper, shouldn't be an issue, and we shouldn't have to worry about the bus body rusting anymore. So lesson learned, make sure that you patch any rusty spots on your bus before you paint it so that they don't become worse and worse over time. Be aware that the hood on a bus is fiberglass, so it might be a little bit different to prep than metal. We had a large part of damage, an actual hole in our hood, in order to repair that, you can get what's called Bondo. It's a fiberglass repair kit. If you wanna learn about how we fixed our hood with Bondo, you can watch our full video in the link up here. All right, after we sanded the whole bus, um, the next step is to clean it with a degreasing soap, like a dish soap. Usually you don't use dish soap or anti-greasing soap for a car because it can like wear down your protective um, polish on your paint. We're trying to get that to happen here, so we washed it with a degreasing soap. That removes like all the tiny little paint particles that we've sanded off and like anything else on the body of the bus. Um, so now it should be nice and clean. We'll do one more cleaning final prep and then we'll spray it. Um, it's really important to clean your bus well so that you don't trap anything underneath your paint because that's where you start to get paint bubbles and chips later on. So cleaning, very important. Good morning. Today we are giving this big guy a bath and it's like 40 degrees so it's pretty cold. So luckily the storage unit that we keep the bus at has a boat wash. So we're gonna wash the bus. Um, it does cost money, but at least we don't have to go anywhere else. can be 40 minutes a lot of scrubbing a lot of cleaning but she looks nice all right so right here on our bus there was some paint that was like flaking off it was like a rusty underneath it um luckily it's still pretty solid but because the paint was flaking off we need to like completely remove that portion of paint down to the bare metal so what we're gonna do now is anywhere that there's bare metal we are gonna spray it with this rust-oleum rusty metal primer um, supposedly it works well so that you can put it on a rusty surface and then be able to paint it without it flaking off later um, before we do that you have to clean the area uh, Jesse was able to go around with his acetone she cleaned all the bare metal spots and now we're just gonna spray them with this primer
morning. The sun is just coming up and we are going to take the bus so that we can roll some ceiling on the roof. All right, today we are gonna show you how to paint the roof of our bus. Um, we are gonna use Henry's Elastomer roof coating, but we are not gonna use the Tropical stuff that everyone else uses. The Henry Tropical is like 100% silicon, which means nothing will ever stick to it ever again. Um, we don't want that. So we are using the much cheaper version, which is the Henry Durabrite. It's still an elastomer roof coating, so it should help um, seal any leaks and things like that. But it's a little bit cheaper, it's a little bit easier to work with. So we'll see how it goes. As we were taking out the windows last weekend, we decided to wait to reseal them so we can have them completely out when we're painting so we don't have to tape them all off. So right now, we're just going to tape off the inside one nice big strip so that we can start painting. Quick side note, if you want to see how we removed and resealed our windows, you can check out our full video in this link up here. Finally time to put the first layer of primer on the bus. Let's go. Once the entire surface of our bus was ready to go, we primed it with Rust-Oleum Clean Metal Primer. It took about 1.5 gallons for our first coat of paint on a 28 foot school bus. And we recommend that you do at least two coats of primer. Definitely be patient and wait till it's a nice sunny day. It's dry outside so that it sticks as best as it can. There's a couple different options you can use to put on your paint or primer. We decided to go with a sprayer, but you could use a roller or a paintbrush. The advantage of a sprayer is that you get a more consistent coat throughout. However, it can be a little bit more challenging if you've never done it before because you might end up with streaks or runs in your paint. We went with the Wagner Control Pro 130. Um, it's fairly cheap and affordable. It advertises that you don't need to thin the paint, but we found that is not the case. We did find it started to clog pretty early on after our first or second use using it. So if you're gonna be doing this and you might be doing more coats, I certainly recommend investing in a little bit nicer one. For primer, we definitely recommend you do at least two coats if possible. The kind of paint you use, whether it's oil or water-based paint, determines how you should thin it. We use an oil-based paint and primer, which means that we had to thin it with mineral spirits. 
Some oil-based paint and primer also tell you that you should thin with acetone, so make sure you read the directions and get that accordingly. We used about six ounces of mineral spirits for one gallon of primer, and make sure when you mix that, you do it outside of your sprayer or your paint can so that if you mess it up, it's not the end of the world. One other important thing is cleanup. Let's talk about cleanup. When we are cleaning up our sprayer, we used almost two whole gallons of mineral spirits. It takes a lot to clean it up if you wanna make sure your sprayer is gonna work properly in the future. So plan accordingly, get extra. You can always return it if you need to. We also wanna talk a little bit about safety when you're doing this. It's really important to wear a respirator when you're spraying paint because one, the fumes, and two, the paint particle goes everywhere. So you don't wanna be breathing that in. It could be really dangerous for yourself. We also recommend you do that while you're sanding. That's really important because there's gonna be a lot of flakes, a lot of paint chipping off, and you wanna make sure you're not breathing all that stuff in. Also, if you do use acetone or mineral spirits to clean up your paint, make sure you're wearing gloves. They're fairly safe, however, um, I did get some on my hands and it ended up giving me a little bit of a chemical burn on the back of my hand. So be aware, your skin might be sensitive to mineral spirits or acetone. The last thing, and we cannot iterate this enough, is that if you spray your bus for paint or primer, it will go absolutely everywhere. This used to be a red shirt and now it is completely covered in the color of our paint and primer. It got all in my hair, all over my glasses, all over everything nearby. So make sure you tape things appropriately, make sure your car is not parked close by, and make sure you don't care what clothes you're wearing or what color your hair is gonna be. Today is the day that we're finally putting the color on our bus. Whoop, whoop. Primer layer is on the bus. Um, before we paint it again, a couple of things happened. Um, we painted it close to night, so there's a couple of bugs that have decided they would end their lives on our hood. Um, we're just gonna sand that with a really fine sandpaper, 400 grit, smooth out anything that was rough, any little drips and that. Um, and then we think we're gonna be good for paint. Okay, now that we have primed, we are ready to paint. All the same rules apply for primer as it does for paint. So the same mixing ratio, six ounces of mineral spirits per one gallon of oil-based paint. When you get to your painting, we do recommend doing more layers than your primer. We did two layers of paint. We think that is the absolute minimum number that you should do because the more you do, the more consistent your paint coat will be and the more durable it will be over time. We used bare oil-based exterior paint, mixed it to whatever color we wanted. It is working totally fine for our bust sticking to metal and we decided to go with that instead of an automotive paint because it is a whole lot cheaper than automotive paint. Still working totally fine and since it's oil-based, it's really thick and can stand up to the elements, no problem. so pretty. Quick note, the instructions for the sprayer said that you do not have to dilute the paint when you put it in. That's what we're trying here in this clip, but after our first spray, we realized it was coming on way too thick, we were getting bubbles, so we did end up diluting the paint with the ratio of mineral spirits that we talked about earlier. The first spray of color.
right, let's talk about some lessons learned from our experience painting our school bus. The first one is how long the entire process takes. So removing the decals, sanding, priming, painting, waiting for things to dry takes a very long time, so just plan that accordingly. Another thing that we would recommend is not trying to paint too close to dark. It becomes very hard to see as it gets darker, so you can't tell how well you're painting. Also starts to get moist and humid, which might affect your layers of paint. We certainly recommend you start early and you do it during the day. One thing that might be helpful for you is to know how much paint and primer we used. So our bus is 28 feet long. We used about two and a half gallons of paint for two coats. Another thing we learned, and I cannot stress this enough, is to make sure you have taped and covered anything you don't want painted. We thought the top of our roof was gonna be safe because we covered about three feet up, but now the center of our roof under our roof deck is about the same color as the side of our bus. So it is green. It will get everywhere. Make sure you cover it up accordingly. All of the tools we used in this video are also linked in the description below. We know that painting your school bus might be pretty challenging, so if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the chat below. We are happy to answer them for you. If this was helpful and you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. We have tons of build videos coming out all the time, and then you get to see us on all of our adventures. Let us know what you think of the new color of the bus. We hope you like it. We are in love with it, and it's definitely better than school bus yellow, so at least that's an improvement. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.